Hello players, how are you doing? It seems every couple of minutes there's a new piece of leaked information about the new Oculus Quest headset, so I'd like to throw my speculative hat into the ring as well. Although, if this video is a couple of days old, it's probably already out of date, so let's get on with it. If you haven't seen the leaked pictures by now, we'll go through some of them, but links will be in the description. First off, I'd like to say that I don't think these leaks are an accident. One picture going rogue, sure, that happens, but all of these, it kind of screams viral marketing 101 to me. But anywho, it's cool and I love it. So what do we know? Well, there is a new strap design. It's similar to the current Quest, but it looks like it's made from a more springy, elasticated material. I personally don't think it looks as comfortable as the Rift S Halo, but it's probably a slight improvement on the current Quest. The controllers have been slightly redesigned and the ergonomics are closer to the original Oculus Touch. The tracking ring is still on the top. Okay, so that's the basics. Let's get on to the interesting stuff. All of the I.O. has moved. So that's the headphone socket, the USB socket and power button. Now, that might seem insignificant at first, but it's actually a pretty big deal. If the I.O. has changed locations, that's a pretty big indicator that they are using a different motherboard or system board. And there's no point going through the expense of designing a new board uh, for no reason, unless you're upgrading things like CPU and RAM. My guess is that this would probably be running a Snapdragon 865 or 855. There's no point designing new things for the 835 or the 845. They've kind of had their day. Next is the lenses. They look slightly different from the Quest and the Rift S. So we're going to continue on the same logical train. Next stop, Lensville. Making new lenses is expensive and time consuming. Even the slightest change requires new tooling and testing and all of that kind of stuff. And you would only change the lenses if there was a new display behind the lenses. I would guess this would be a single display as it's you know, being based on mobile hardware. So if there is a new display, that means the refresh rate should go up. It was 72 Hertz and that was just about pushing it. Although it does look really good at 72 with all the software tricks and things they've implemented, but we might see a significant bump in the refresh rate. My guess is that it will be at least 90 or 120 if we're very, very lucky. I say that because this is mobile hardware and we have an entire industry to draw comparison from. Their latest ROG phone, okay, it's a thousand pounds, but from ASUS, it runs at 144 hertz, uh, even 160 hertz with a software hack. High-end phone displays have been at 90 or 120 hertz for years now, and that should trickle down into displays that are good enough for VR. Those are the two key points that I really want to look at because we kind of expect marginal improvements in tracking and better AR support and probably some new gimmicky feature. Oh, and if that, hopefully, if that Type-C support uses Thunderbolt 3, then you will have a better experience with the link cable and probably only have about 10% performance loss from your GPU. But Thunderbolt 3 is expensive, so don't get your hopes up there. Here's where I think they're going to cheap out. I think we'll see another downgrade in audio. I think they have that headphone port as a crutch, so there's that. I think the battery will be 2800 uh, milliamp hours. I don't think we're going to see 4000 or 6000. It, it adds far too much weight. Another place is storage. I think the base model will be 64 gigabytes, and models over that are going to see a steep jump. Sorry, tangent time, because this, <laughs> this bugs me. Right now, it's a hundred pound jump from 64 gigabyte to 120 gigabyte with the current Quest. I mean, that's a hundred pound. Storage doesn't really cost that much. You can buy a 128 gigabyte card on Amazon right now for 15 pounds or about $20. It's stupid. Anyway, I don't think the packaging will be as elaborate either. Each new product, we've kind of seen less and less packaging. The original Rift, the original Rift was amazing that was like its own box and carry case brilliant <laughs> but yeah so i think we'll see less of that but i do think this will be a nice upgrade and they will upgrade the important features while holding back on some of the things that we can make do with i don't think this will be a quest 2 but more of a mid-gen refresh like the rift s so quest 1.5 and i think they will discontinue the original quest and sell this in its place like they did with the rift s and keep the price at 399. All of this lines up with the report from Bloomberg early in the year, 
which said the upcoming Oculus Quest could be 20% lighter and 15% smaller, and prototypes with up to 120 hertz displays were being tested. Oh yeah, it looks like the IPD adjustment is still there, but now it has three presets. And the rumored release date for this is September the 15th. So should you wait? Well, that's your call. I could be wrong about everything, but I'm not wrong about this video ending now. <laughs> so do you think I'm right? Let the people know in the comments below and what would be your killer feature for a new Quest or a new portable VR headset? Let the people know below. Hit the like button if you like this so I know to make more like this. And if you want to see more, hit the sub button because the sub button really does help out us small creators. So thank you for that. And until next time, be excellent to each other and keep playing.